All right. Thanks so much for tuning in. You're listening to Encouraging Your Spirit Podcast, and I am your host, Chris, and I hope this message finds you doing well. Today, we're excited because we have a friend to the show, a mentor, a spiritual leader, a wonderful person all around, uh, Apostle Anton Wallace. So for those that have never met you uh, or, yeah, never met you, what would be three words you use to describe yourself? Ooh, um, well, first, thank you for having me, Chris. I'm excited to be here. Um, three words that I would use to uh, describe myself. Um, spirited. Uh, calm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and evolving. evolving. Probably the three words I would use to... Okay by me in this current moment. Okay. <laughs> in this current moment. I get I can appreciate that evolving in its spirit to the call, which may, which brings me to the next question I was gonna ask you. Because uh one of the things that I uh was reading or that I read uh I've read some of it, I haven't read all of it. I read some of the book that you wrote called The Gift mm-hmm. Called Prophecy. And I just wanted to ask you about like your process in writing the book. What was that like? Wow. Um, we're taking me back a couple of years. <laughs> right. um, well, no, it was two, 2018, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm looking at now, it's right around this time that I started uh-huh. doing the um, the promos for the mm-hmm. book. So this, it was a very interesting journey. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to say 2016, 2014. 2014, I did my first prophetic conference. Mm-hmm. Um, I preached that Friday night and we had classes that Saturday morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, that led into the afternoon and on the way home Friday night after the service had a wonderful time spirit of God moved it was great thank you mm-hmm. so much God mm-hmm. so uh, on the way home I heard mm-hmm. <laughs> I could probably tell you exactly where I was on 20 when I heard it mm-hmm. a gift called prophecy and so here I am being one who didn't really have a prophetic mentor Mm-hmm. Um, there were no classes where I was um, in church that reared and, and trained and developed um, the prophetic gifting in anyone. Um, mm-hmm. The only time I heard of things like that were usually in other uh, more Pentecostal cities like your, mm-hmm. you know, your Riley's and your Charlotte's and, you know, your mm-hmm. all this East Coast is really big on the prophetic. And so being from Nashville, we didn't really have anywhere to go. Okay, But so I took to Amazon and I took to Barnes and Nobles and I just started grabbing as much information I could from other uh, other authored prophets mm-hmm. um, to kind of get me started. Mm-hmm. So of course, when I hear a gift called prophecy, my mind and spirit says, oh, there's a book out there the Lord wants me to read. Okay. <laughs> so right. I go to Amazon and I put it in Google and guess what? There was no such book. Oh, wow. And then God <laughs> I looked at them myself. I said, I know you are lying to me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because that's how, you know, me and the Lord communicate. I'm, right. I know you are lying. You do not. And so I really literally sat on it. Okay. I had the title. I knew what it was supposed to do. I knew it was going to be a book, kind of like a, a prophetic 100 book, a book that would kind of bring the prophetic down. Mm-hmm. from its mystical levels and those right. super spiritual levels to mm-hmm. something kind of more um, applicable, more attainable, making it right. more realistic for mm-hmm. every prophet um, and anybody who just wanted to prophesy, you know, because okay. the scripture says to desire prophecy, mm-hmm. like to desire to be, to, to be able to prophesy. Okay. And so that's kind of how that happened. And again, like a couple of years later, I decided to go ahead and jump into the book and get it out Mm -hmm. Um, because the only goal for me was to get it out of me. Okay, right, get it out of me. I didn't have an outcome. I wasn't caring about a stage or a platform. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be known as the prophet such and such. And Mm -hmm. and me and my book coach, we used to have this back and forth. Shout out to Robin Robbins Mm -hmm. because I gave her a hard time. I did. Mm -hmm. I gave her a hard time. She has, she's phenomenal in helping people birth their their books and Mm -hmm entrepreneurial pursuits and she's a great coach wealth of information but i'm a hard hard person to lead when there's something mm-hmm. i don't want to do right right 
And I already took two years to get to this point. Mm-hmm. Now, you don't give me too much because she wanted me to do another social media page. And she wanted, and there was a lot of things I agreed to, but the process for me actually wasn't as long as I thought. Mm-hmm. Um, I really jumped into writing my book as I released some of the things that were already that I had entangled myself in okay. to in loyalties and responsibilities to ministries um, that I fully support. Right. And I fully support. Uh, um, but at the same time, there was something in me that I needed to support more. Right. Right. And so I had to release my hand to some of the things because I at the same time, it's holding me up mm-hmm. as well as holding someone else's position where they should be. Right. I need right. to move so someone else can move. Right, right, right. So then when I started to do that, I started to dive into my book and it didn't take as long as I thought it would to write it. I probably had it out in like a month or so. Okay. Um, and then we started the process of, you know, the Library of Congress and getting the name and, okay. and all of these things. And so the process was really, really interesting, but it took a while because mm-hmm. I was in denial. Okay. <laughs> I was you say in, in, denial, in denial that you should be writing it or in denial? Yeah, that I was like, you didn't want me to do this. You don't right. want me to write a book. You know, that's not what you said. No. But that's exactly what happened. Okay. Yeah. okay. So how would you say in writing that book, has, that what has been the evolution process of you then versus now? Is there some level of transition or is it, you know, the same? So many levels of transition. <laughs> there were so many levels of transition. And some that I often uh, wrestle and, you know, have those conversations within myself now because, you know, most prophetic, uh, when you talk about the prophetic, you talk about it more in exclusively in church settings. Mm-hmm. Um, you'd hear them doing prophetic conferences, workshops. Right. I've done right. them. I've had them. I've had one here I did in Atlanta and I did one in Nashville. Mm-hmm. And so I, I know what that's like. And so, um, but I was as a child, one of those um, kids who was spiritually intuitive, um, but not, but in the context of my upbringing, nobody knew what to do with that. Okay. Okay. I would ask questions like, you know, grandma, you say that God gave us five senses, mm-hmm. but what happens when those senses are not enough? <laughs> you were that cute. <laughs> There's got to be more than just seeing, touching, tasting, feeling, and hearing. There's got to be more. Okay. So that was kind of where I was as a child. Mm-hmm. So the prophetic, again, um, it, it evolved in me um, but I was always the awkward thinking child. I was mm-hmm. always seeing God from different lenses okay. um, and always kind of questioning mm-hmm. um, the, the, the norms of my denominations and, and mm-hmm. the religion as, as a whole, mm-hmm. because I was like, There's, this doesn't feel right. It doesn't right. feel like, you know, mm-hmm. y'all talk about this great God, but then there's this great suffering that um, there's this issue with me and there's this issue in my body and, and I guess this is now my thorn and and there's all these thought trains of thought that we we buy into because we we are, we are believe that they will be right we don't you right. know because we we trust their word we trust them to be the mouthpiece of God and we put a lot more trust in that voice than we do in the one that's on the inside right so throughout the evolution of the book I put the book out there um, whatever the book was going to do, I pushed it as long as I felt necessary. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't normally, I don't really push it now. Um, it's out there. I'm probably going to write another one. You know, we used to sell same Russell, like are you serious <laughs> right now? Um, but, um, the book, that book evolved me to a place where I released, you know, I got, I matriculated through church and elder this, pastor that, you know, and I'm apostle now and, Mm -hmm. you know, all these other things. And that's wonderful. But Mm -hmm. what that book did for me is it challenged, what are they getting when they see prophet Antoine Wallace? Right. right. What are they getting when they get to see pastor Antoine Wallace? What are they getting when they see apostle Antoine Wallace? Mm -hmm. And so I had to really do some introspective work. And I started to challenge a lot of the things that I grew up to believe um, things that didn't really work for me now, mm-hmm. um, you know, trying to take on, see, seeking out new things that actually work for me, like that right. serve me, that 
that are helping me along the journey mm -hmm. um, to get to wherever I'm going to end up. Right. And that's kind of how my idea has been. And in that, I released all of the titles per se, mm -hmm. because what I really believe and understood was it doesn't matter what they call me, I'm still going to be Antoine. Right. right I have right. to be so comfortable and so in tune with who Antoine is. Mm -hmm. Because Antoine is the thing that God thought about when God thought about Antoine. Right. And I can't become the things that you thought about me or think I should become right. because you see a certain gift or you see spirit moving in as and through me and you want to title it and take, you know, uh, use it for cloud and respond. Mm -hmm. This is my, you know, da, 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 da. No, 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 no. I get to be me everywhere. It, right. I right. get to be Antoine. When my, when my daughter calls me dad, I'm still Antoine. When my right. mama calls me son, I'm still Antoine. Mm -hmm. When when Chris calls me apostle, I'm still Antoine. <laughs> yeah. And so I have gotten so comfortable. But what I've realized is that it's based upon the relationship I have with you mm -hmm. that you see me in those terms. Right. It's fine. Mm -hmm. But I still get to be me. You still get to be me. Yeah. And I don't, it doesn't entrap my gift mm -hmm. to a certain idea. Right. It takes my gift and it places it in places where I could be anywhere. Right. It's not just for a church. Right. No. And I agree with that because I don't think our gifts are exclusively for church. Because lately I, I remember talking to Clifton about how I thought lately that our entire life is ministry. It's not just what mm -hmm. we do, you know, when you're in. Because I mean, these days I'm not in my own life, I'm not in the physical space anymore. So church is wherever I'm at right now. Right. I, right this right. could be church for all we're saying. It's just, it depends on what that, that, that. Um, we are having church right, right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> we have it right now. Right. So it's just interesting to me to think about that and then to think about how you talk about the way people see you and, and how, you know, you, you're still yourself in all of those mm -hmm. things. So would you believe that our identity is, is multifaceted? Absolutely. I believe the identity of what we call God is multifaceted. Mm -hmm. And I say that for the same reasons. Mm -hmm. we're, we're made in the image and the likeness of God. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the church has, and you know, we've taken kind of type of um, hierarchy. And so we're like the extreme religion and everything else is subs subsequent to us. Right. Uh, us Christians. And right. we, you know, we down and look down on every other place. But, you know, even Spirit of God dealt with me on that. I, it's the same with you. I, I, they, some people may call you God. That's the name we gave you. Mm -hmm. We don't have to name what's unnameable, to name the, the this, mm -hmm. this magnitude. The only thing we have recorded is that I am. Right. That's really all we have. Yeah. That's all we have, but well, we call it different things. We call it God, we call it a uh, divine mind, we call it a uh, source, we call it universe. And I don't think that it is uh, uh, upset with any of that because it's based upon the relationship that person has with it. Right, right. And everybody it has makes... their, own, their own relationship and I don't get to decide that your relationship is wrong because you see it that way or because that's right. your experience. Because I think we so get to be multifaceted just like God gets right. to be multifaceted. Right. I get to be all things to all people. Why can't God be that? Right, right, right. Why can't God be that? We're just a manifestation of the same thing. Right. <laughs> true. That's, that's that's true. We, we're the same. We are just different uh, 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 waves of the same ocean. Like mm -hmm. we get to do all the things as, as God in the earth. Mm -hmm. So why can't I be multifaceted? Why right. can't why do I have to just be? a prophet in your church right just be that we can be we, can be, we get to be the more it's, yeah you know, and saying. you and then you monopolize and autonomize on everything that i am no no right. no, no. no. <laughs> i am i am an advocate for the liberty that christ has really made us like i'm right. an advocate for the freedom okay. to be able to serve and not be bound in what you are calling this spiritual slavery or this yoke that you claim that we are this note it should be easy right yeah but we somehow made it hard. <laughs> At least that's the way it feels. <laughs> Challenges and hoops and political things behind the scenes and, and so, who's going to wear what colors and who who gets to tell me who, who gets to do this and, mm -hmm. and, and who gets to grace this. It's, it's way too much. too much. Like it's way too much. Too much. Too much.
which in some ways it becomes like it's a barrier for the very people that you're trying to serve, for the very people that God is represented to. It's just become mm-hmm. like a litany of all the things that, you know, we make it more challenging than God makes Absolutely. it. So, <laughs> so Absolutely. So with, so with that being said, then what does that be faith is to you? Say it again. What is faith been to you? Faith? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Um, faith is interesting for me. So for me, mm-hmm. I think faith for me is more of a knowing. Okay. Um, because we were taught beliefs. Mm-hmm. And I was on a um, meditation call with Pastor John Scott from Chattanooga. And he said we're in that, in that call and it wore me out. I release my beliefs for the knowing Mm -hmm. and that knowing is whatever the truth is. Mm -hmm. So I am real big on just affirming the truth because a lot of things will tell you an opposite story. Fear will tell you an opposite story. Ego will tell you an opposite story. Um, 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 There's anxiety will do it. Depression will tell you a story. Mm -hmm. Um, But I'm an advocate for saying, okay, now, now that we've gone through that, what is the truth? Right. And believing and completely, because even with when it comes down to, to manifestations of material things, I don't really operate from a place of the absence of it because I'm, you know, big in Abraham Hicks and mm. uh, the vortex and all that. I'm, I don't operate from a place of its absence. And I think that's really what a lot of the church has become. Mm-hmm. We are looking for the thing. Uh, we are reaching for the thing. We are trying to attain a thing. For most of us, that's already there, but we're so focused on it's not being there that we don't realize that we already have it. Right. right, right. That if we re- we walk in the energy that it's already here, and we it's been cliches throughout the, my life in church, um, and I'm almost forty years old, mm-hmm. that. Um, we are, uh, we are always reaching for that uh, God has something else that we have to, there's some, to, something that we have to do to attain it. Mm-hmm. We have to go through to get it. And I don't really believe that's, that's not my God concept. Right. I believe that I believe where it says that God wants to give good gifts to his children. I believe that if uh, uh, all the good and perfect gifts come from above, they're already here. They're already here. Yeah. But if I, my manifestation happens quicker when I know that, when I internalize that and when I operate as that, mm-hmm. I am not lacking anything. Everything I need is already provided. Already provided, right. I am I, just walking in the flow of it. Right, and I, I, can, I can see that and understand that because the other day I was doing this podcast and I was thinking about what you said thematically in terms of re-envisioning outcome or re-envisioning mm-hmm. failure. And I said, was saying, well, sometimes maybe it isn't that something has failed is that you only meaning me only want to accept one outcome like if it's only this right. then that mm-hmm. means and I'm like but well, maybe that's that's not what it is you're, right. you're going through something yes no one doubts that people go through things there are all kinds of circumstances perspectives and beliefs but maybe you know letting go of the outcome of what it means and just being open to like you were saying truth can cannot truth if God is multifaceted could not choose to multifaceted, meaning absolutely, and and it's time. always typically our version of the truth that we buy right. into, right? Like even when things, uh, like you were saying, we are are usually we see this, we have this outcome, and we don't recognize that that outcome mm-hmm. is that we have bought into or that we are allowing to play out. Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, is a choice, right? <laughs> yeah. We get to choose get to how choose. we view whatever the outcome has become. Right. We can choose that just like, oh, this is why this happened and this and the other. And we can leave it as if that was the thing. But there's really absolutely no, nothing has failed. There's no failures. Right. There's usually just redirections. There's Because right. everything is useful. Everything is lost. Every, we're using everything to get to where we are. Right. And nothing, because spirit is way too, way too intelligent right. to allow <laughs> us, come on here to allow us to maneuver ourselves so far that we don't get to where we have intended to go in the first place. Right, yeah. Like, it's just a like matter that. of how you are, uh, 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 um, what attachments you mm-hmm. have to the outcome. Mm-hmm. And we usually suffer because we're so emotionally attached to what it happened. And especially if it didn't happen in the way that we thought it should. Mm-hmm. Right. Instead of saying it happened as it should have. Right, and I think that's, that's the challenge is being able to say it happened as it should have, that everything 
was supposed to because sometimes I think we want a life that is absent of pain but that's not of necessarily course. a realistic thing I mean nobody it's like I feel the same way about that when we have that song brokenness I know we saying brokenness is what I no one does no one does but no one really wants it. Do you see how these things just don't serve us anymore? Like, <laughs> yes. as we become more aware and awake, right. certain things just fall off. Like, that doesn't like, make sense. That does yes. For that, yeah. So that, that's really interesting. Or just to be open to what provision is. Because sometimes the provision is, is not something that you can quantify financially. Sometimes provision is emotional. Sometimes provision Absolutely. is mental. Sometimes provision is relational it may or may not be but just being open to what that means is I feel and to I be think. open to what that outcome did in and and through you right. like when you step back and say okay this happened mm -hmm. and my immediate response was to go down suffering lane mm -hmm. because i could choose to do that or i can choose to say it happened as it was supposed to and now i get to see it from a different perspective this is where I am now. And then I can still move and make a different decision. It doesn't have to be bad right. or what we identify right. as a failure. Right. right. It's just saying, okay, sit there, deal with that. All right, now here's the plan. Cause we've all had to do that. That's all we've been doing, but, but we've been taking the slow route with it um, because we've all survived a hundred percent of our worst days. Right. Right. So we've all had to face an outcome and do a redirection. It's just a matter of how long it took us to do that. And what did we assign that moment for? Did right. we assign it to pain and do it? Oh, I remember when, or I'll be better off if I did this because we like to tell a story. <laughs> we like to be a victim of that story. We want to continue telling the story. And I, and we, and I even ask myself when I get tripped up sometimes and trying to tell, cause you know, you get talked to your good friends and your yeah. good Judas and you get to just sharing because that's what you do. And I ask myself now, why, what, what part of me is wanting to tell this story? Right. It's right. probably my ego. Right. There's still some, you know, some pain body I'm dealing with mm -hmm. and my friends just listen, let me carry on. But <laughs> it's the reason, you know, and I try to be more mindful because that means I'm still attached to what happened and I've assigned right. every pain I could to that part. Right, right. And Instead I've, of I've saying, you know what, that's just what was supposed to happen. That was what's supposed to happen. And I think that too in itself is what you said is an evolution because I was mm -hmm. thinking about having experienced once. I think I was talking to James about it some time ago, but it, it wasn't a one and done. It was the experience of looking at relational experiences and the dysfunction in that. And I remember saying to, to Alba, uh, show me me. Like, I know what I think mm -hmm. happens. But, and then I remember seeing it sometime later, and I was like, that's what happened. That story doesn't, <laughs> doesn't even match to the story that right. I've been telling. And it was just really interesting to, like, have that experience and look at, you know, like you're saying, the, the pain that you've attached to certain situations, and it's like, yeah, okay. But why do I keep repeating it in your mind? Keep, you know, and the fact that we get to observe and sit and watch our thoughts is to me a new experience. And I also think about it in terms of the fact that with the pandemic, life in many ways has slowed down because you have to. You couldn't physically Absolutely. go places. You couldn't, that accessibility that you had, it's kind of slowed down. So now you are with you. And all of the good <laughs> and, and then you relationally, you. you know, they too. I mean, all y'all together. So it's like, wait, I don't have to give you this to be distracted. Right, right, so right. Now right, I get to right. Look at stuff or or pretend. I mean, so some people don't, and that's no judgment. That it is what it is. But um, it just made me think about that. Which brings me to my next question, because you've been doing a great series on the Wednesdays and now the power of now. How has that series impacted your life so what's funny about the series and i think we've been doing it a little over a year now mm -hmm. is i read the book with no intentions on teaching it okay <laughs> i read the book for me okay yes. um a yes. friend of mine recommended the book was like hey you need to get this book and i was like you know uh when you have good enlightened evolved people around you they sharpen you and they it's just like scripture says iron sharpens iron mm -hmm. they you 
you assess how they handle what they are doing, how what works for them. You implement some things, you kind of make some things personal to yourself, and they continue to keep you based upon the things that they are imparting in you at random. Like, mm-hmm. hey, get this book. Does it to me all the time. So I when I got the power of now, it was a recommendation. Okay. Um, and I read the book for me. Mm-hmm. Um, the power of now and it talks about by Eckhart Tolle and he talks about being present and how um, most of us ha- are running being run by our minds and what we are thinking about and how we are never really settled and we're never really present mm-hmm. and we talk about I'm here I'm here right now but you're really not right. like we oftentimes um, living in two different paradigms and two different time shifts and we're either um, in the past and trying to like this, this happened to me and I am the way I am because of the things that happened to me. Mm-hmm. Or we're trying to cope with a future that still hasn't happened. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're trying, we're either in fear of that or we are in hope of something and we're trying to believe that, which in turn is again, back to the emotional attachments, tells us that if that doesn't happen, we're going to be devastated. Right. right. If this happens, I'm going to be completely demolished, bankrupt. And so then it's like, why do any of that when all you can have is what we have right now? Right. And we can enjoy this moment, making, doing the things that we need to do to move toward the goals that we have, to make sure sure that things are uh, working out. But the most important step, the only step that we have is the one that we're on. Right. And so what am I doing right now in every aspect of my life? What am I doing right now? What am I doing? To ensure that tomorrow, I'm a different person. Mm-hmm. My relationships are better. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm one step closer to goals. I'm one step cert- uh, closer to certain freedoms that I'm looking for, uh, certain abilities, certain manifestations. What I am doing right now is kind of where I went with the book. And I felt like when the spirit was um, dealing with me, I was like, I have to teach this. I even shut down uh, the Bible studies that I was doing um, for a few months. Mm-hmm. At the end of last year, and the end of that year prior to us doing it, uh, because I needed to revamp me, mm-hmm. and I was like, I'm going from a place of I'm teaching the Bible, I'm teaching the Bible, teaching the Bible, to not wanting to only use the Bible. Right, right, right. And right. what am I going to do to open up this scope to everybody else? Right, right. And what I do understand about me and my gifts and my purpose and my uh, mm-hmm. how I move in this earth realm is that I am a bridge. Mm-hmm. And so my goal and my, my life is to link one thing to the next. Mm-hmm. So just like um, being a parent with a newborn and uh, they're transitioning from milk into baby food and mm-hmm. you know you can't just all the nutrients ain't just in the carrots you know right. they're just not in the yeah. pears right you got to kind of mix them carrots them peas and that pears together right so that you can get all those all the nutrients and things that you need mm-hmm. even if that tastes a little weird at first right right you know you may not you may be heavy that baby may be heavy on pears and you got to sneak them greens in right <laughs> and so that's kind of how i feel I'm mm-hmm. teaching, I'm using, I'm applying it from a whole new thought perspective, but mm-hmm. I get to loop in those things that everybody's familiar with and right. introduce them to something they've never heard of. Right. What I have found out is that it's now becoming a whole thing. And right. it could be because I've tapped into the realm of being present, being now. And so now everything around that is coming to me, working together for the good of those who love you and I'm mm-hmm. gone according to your purpose. They all come together and manifest. And all I see now is, being present, being here now. What does this number mean? What did you view when you were in the moment that you were in? How does your body feel? What energy are you giving off? Are you are you in pain in your body? Is your body trying to tell you that we need some some breath? We need to be breathing. Is anxiety building up in you? Is are you having pains, illnesses that could be avoided by taking time to be still? Mm-hmm. Like, are, is your mind running you so much that it's draining you? You can shut it off. Use it as a tool. You don't need it all the time. So these are the things that I've applied as I was reading it. And I get to reinforce in me as I'm teaching it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I get to check me as I'm going. Like, mm-hmm. I am still a student of this book, of this of this information. Right. Even though I've read it once, I done highlighted my papers and everything. I am still learning this. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's never ending. I am enjoying it now. Same person sent, tells me, hey, get this book. 
I'm reading a book called The Naked Now. Oh, okay. The Naked Now. It's, okay. Now that is absolutely <laughs> incredible. Again, okay. just for me, not okay. sure what's going to happen with it later. Right. I'm just doing this because it's my journey. I mm -hmm. have to take control of what, of how I move and what, how I, how much access I allow spirit to do in, as, and through me. Right. And so as I am opening up to that, I am doing this for me and then saying, hey, all right, we probably should tell the people about this. Right. And just seeing who, you know, I'm never controlled with any outcome because mm -hmm. I, I sit there and I watch the numbers on Wednesday nights go up, go down. It looks almost sometimes it turns off and I'll be sitting here. I'm still talking right? <laughs> because I never know where it's going to go. Right. And that is completely up to spirit. Wherever right. spirit wants this to go, I've done my part in making sure that this pebble hits this, this river so there can be a ripple. Right. 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 That's good. So with that question, what do you want people to get from your life? Um, I would probably have to say to always be okay with reinventing yourself. Okay. Um, that's one of the things that I think I hadn't noticed about myself that it was brought to my attention. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my dear friends told me, she was like, I just love how you reinvent yourself. And I had to stop and think like, Mm -hmm. Ever so often, I kind of do an overhaul. You know, you mm -hmm. never know with me. <laughs> I'll have hair today. I'll be bald headed tomorrow. Yeah. Um, I'm doing things now that I have always thought about doing, but just never really done. Mm -hmm. And again, attributed to pandemics and having to <laughs> not do much of anything else. Mm -hmm. And you get to buy into your own uh, uh, your own thing. Mm -hmm. And to really uh, maximize what the things that you wanted to do. Um, there was so many things that I have been able to do since the pandemic. I have not missed a beat. And I know that's been kind of weird uh, mm -hmm. for most people because I know we are all experiencing this differently. Mm -hmm. My story is I don't have any sad stories. Mm -hmm. um, the pandemic hasn't done anything but make me sit down with myself, enjoy my own company heal places in me, learn places in me that still need some attention, mm -hmm. um, let go of some things, mend, mend some things, uh, fix things, uh, write things. Um, mm -hmm. I have practiced some stuff, do some things that you want to do. Not like, you know, we talked about we're no longer in the physical space of church. I have now been communing out in nature. Like I will chase waterfalls. I've always been, even as a child, a nature boy. I would always be found in the woods. Okay. My grandmother lived in the woods. My grandmother raised me. Um, I stayed with her for the majority of my life. And she never moved the whole time. Mm -hmm. I, and then behind us, we had all this land and I would just always be gone mm -hmm. in the woods, just yeah. in trees, just looking at stuff, not looking for anything, just looking at everything, mm -hmm. like just at, in the woods. So now since the pandemic has happened and we don't assemble really um, as often as we used to, I've been able to get connect back to that part of me that, and it reminds me of the child within me Okay. Um, that always is able to dream and to live. And, you know, that whole, that spirit that Jesus talked about is that suffer little children must come to me and forbid them not that whole, mm -hmm. that innocence that children has. Right. Um, that anything's possible. Right. You know, and I have been able to return to that. So I've actually, um, I actually want people to realize that you don't have to confine yourself to the things that you knew. Mm -hmm. Now it's very scary. Right. Because um, you feel sacrilegious when mm -hmm. you start the journey uh, within to be like, okay, God, show me you for real. Like <laughs> I know what I heard about you. Right. I've seen what I've read and you know, I read, I read it. I take, I'm like my Bishop Flunder. I take God too seriously to take this Bible so literally. Mm -hmm. um, I, I read the stories. I see the characters. I see how they interpret you. Because mm -hmm. that's what I'm reading. I'm reading right. their interpretations. Of right, it, right. But right. I have one too. Mm -hmm. We're living epistles. We're, that right. thing didn't stop. We are writing a whole book that we have no idea what will look like 2,000 years from now. Right, right, right. That's but I want to do it in who you are. And so if that means I got to peel away everything that I was taught to believe about you, I will do that. Right. Um, Pastor John Scott said in one of his meditations, he says, 
um, our meditation today was wipe me out again. This man's incredible. He says, okay. God, get rid of God. God, get rid of God. Okay. That place where I've made you an idol, those things that I knew about you that I have said, oh yeah, you did this. They did it in scriptures. They made idols and, and set memorials in, in the scriptures. And, and even God had to tell them in uh, Isaiah. I want to say Isaiah. Oh, <laughs> Forget you the former things. I want to yes. say Isaiah 26. Forget okay. you the former things. Mm -hmm. uh, and neither remember them. Yes, I've made rivers in the desert. Yes, I have parted Red Seas. Yes, I have healed the dead, I've raised the dead. Yes, I, I've done all that, but don't remember that. Right. Because you make a God out of that. Right, right. And I am, behold, I will do a new thing. And here's my favorite word, now it will spring forth. It's that new word of now has uh, transformed so many different things. When I hear yeah, that, I, I am doing the thing yeah. now. Mm -hmm. But you I, are too busy stuck in what I've done. Right, because I know I was listening to a song the other day. I, I like Maverick City's worship music. And there was a song they did that was in the middle. And I know, you know, Chandler Moore was singing about you're not just the God of the Alpha, you know, the Alpha and Omega. But she was talking about the God in the middle. But in, in my mind, when he was singing, I was thinking, but he's the God right now. Like, what? Now. And here's the funny thing about. I wrong, but I was just like, wait, the now. Forget the middle. Today. This moment. This day, this. <laughs> but here is the thing. Here's yeah. the funny thing about that. Yeah. Because God is not in time. Spirit doesn't involve in time. Yeah. Alpha and Omega are happening at the same See? time. That's me right there. I never thought wait a minute. They're always happening. It's at the same time. At the same time. Mm. That's me. So when is God not happening? <laughs> when is God not the God of? Yeah. It's an infinite. Uh, it's infinite. A, uh, it's yeah. an infinite flow. It's never ending. Never ending. Alpha and Omega are just, it's its just going like this. Mm -hmm. it's, and it's not, for us, we are looking at it from time. Time, right. And that's what a lot of us suffer from, mm -hmm. Time. time. We that suffer is. because we wanted to be here by a certain age. We wanted to have had this accomplished by a certain age. I wanted to be married with two point and a half children mm -hmm. by a certain time. And I wanted to have I wanted to have this degree by a certain time. And now we are suffering because we didn't do it by the time we thought we had. Yeah. But when we take ourselves out of that and say, I have not missed anything. If I want to do it, I still can do it. And mm -hmm. now is the time to do it. Now is the time, right. Because right. Alpha and Omega are, are are, there's no there's no dissonance there. There's no distance between Alpha and Omega. It just continues. And I, I guess for me, I was thinking image because I was thinking one of my favorite things used to be when I lived in Florida was going to the beach and how you could sit and look at the water. And when you said that about Alpha and Omega being the infinite, I thought about like the time when you look at the water and how you can't really see when it stops. It just isn't it. And I'm like, couldn't that not be in that moment? It just ain't that how God is? You can't see it stop. It's always flowing. Even, it even when you don't is. see it, it's still there. So Yeah, yeah. it always is. Mm -hmm. It always is. It always is. It continues to be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I do agree that it does not change. It is the same. It is the same. Thank Yesterday, you. today, and forever. It's always been the same. Mm -hmm. We've interpreted it differently. Right. That's true. That's true. And we come from a place of interpretation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we, our interpretation is based upon experiences that now we've assigned to it, but it's probably not that. Right. Bring your own, but, or, yeah. Bring your own meaning, or or and or be open to it being something yeah. totally different. And 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 that's another thing. Mm -hmm. uh, get from me that it's okay to change how you view God. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to. I wrestled with when I first heard, and I, I was like, because I'm churched. You know me, mm -hmm. I'm churched. <laughs> You're right. I know the Bible, I know the book. I can walk through the scriptures and I can I know it in the consciousness that I was in. But I remember when I was in church and I heard uh, who was now my head mother at, at Word and Power, she would say, Mother, Father, God. And I would pause mm -hmm. and look at her like, hmm. Okay. Because she was always deemed from everyone else the different lady or the, mm -hmm. the they call it the tree lady or this, mm -hmm. that, and other, because it was. She, she was more connected and grounded to um, 
more, I think probably more than any of us who were so high in the, in the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. sure. And we couldn't understand that her roots dug so, so much deeper and her foundation was stronger. She didn't, she had stuff going on and as, as we all do, but she handles hers with a different uh, uh, grounding. Mm -hmm. her, her views of God be as mother and father, which makes sense to me because, okay, if you're going to create anything, you have to have both male and fe fe feminine and masculine energy to do so. You do. You do. You have to have the energy of it. Uh, uh, even scripture calls, you know, talks about God being female. And I know I didn't realize that until now, mm -hmm. that even in Proverbs, when it was talking about wisdom and how it will be in the streets and she will assist you and she yeah. will guide you. Yeah. And who is wisdom? Who is the divine intelligence? Right. God. God. Mm -hmm. Your Bible calls God a girl. Yes. 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 And so we have, I have to allow mm -hmm. right. the idea yeah. that she is doing things for me that I wouldn't understand. She is always guiding me. She is always teaching me. Mm -hmm. That's why I love um, uh, The Shack because it identifies God in so many different ways. Oh, that's my favorite book. I yeah, I'm, I am. I am a fan yeah, I love, I of love the, the diversity that we see as God. Right, because I remember people having discussions about that, about how the the in the book, uh, uh, God was represented as a black woman or a mother, mm -hmm. like you're saying. And some people were like, "Well, that's problematic." I was like, "Not necessarily." <laughs> not necessarily because i'm not like relationally uh relationally i, I think and, and even in the representation of god it's not just one it goes back to what you've been saying multifaceted because i mean i was thinking about that too in terms of jesus uh jesus is represented in different ways when you look yeah. at matthew mark Luke, and which is challenging to the church in some ways in my opinion because it's like which jesus which one some of right, us right. Like luke jesus <laughs> so because we don't we don't consider that this is the author's point of view right so and who else has a point of view right me me right it's so and i get to tell i get to have my my say about what i experience in this earth realm and mm -hmm. how i view um god and what god is doing and it's okay that's, i think that's what kind of what paul was kind of talking about we said seek out your own soul salvation mm -hmm. And not necessarily that we have to be saved for anything, but our our relationship and how we view God, um, and what ways have we assigned? What things have what humanistic humanistic uh, characteristics that we assign to God and should not be? Right, right. Yeah. I view God as a a, a, a ward and a dictator, and, and that's because your dad was, and so now because you see dad like this, now you view God. That Right. Or you see God, uh, my dad was absent. I didn't have a dad exactly. growing up. So now you see God as absent. Mm -hmm. Like we assign certain things to it because of certain, no, 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 no. Get to know it for real. Mm -hmm. Like without, you know, grandmama's story is good, but that was grandmama's. That was grandmama's relationship. And it may not look like yours. It may not no. resemble yours at all. My mama and I, my mother is an overseer. Mm -hmm. I'm an apostle, sure. We view God completely different. Mm -hmm. And I always tell her, we don't have to share the beliefs to be still be able to get along. I understand the truth underneath it. Right, right. Your words I don't use, my words you don't use, fine. But you understand the truth underneath it. And I, I can get that because that's a place that I, I find myself getting to with my, with my own parents. Because I would characterize my parents as fundamentalists in many mm -hmm. ways. And, and some of the words that they use for God or the way that they view God I'm like I don't see God that way but it's cool we don't we don't have to have this. yeah like this they're fine. also 70 so I'm like you it's not really that in that change factor I don't know if that's mm -hmm. gonna happen but it's okay you know we, we, we can be yeah. different on that but Absolutely. I understand that you know like I said I can see the truth in some of it I can definitely see that too um it's really interesting to me uh hymns now make more sense to me than they made, you know, when I was younger. Or at least not in the sense that I feel that they're literal. I can just mm -hmm, understand mm -hmm. how people would use them, which is why I like when a song does contemporary and then they take you to the hymn. So you see how they're, it's like the old and the new. Or the mm -hmm. So it's always interesting. It's the bridge. The bridge, <laughs> like you said. The it's bridge. the bridge. 
I thank you so much for, for being a part. Last question. What would be your advice to future individuals, ministry leaders, just people? Um, my only advice is to be completely present as well, always, to what you currently hear Spirit saying. And I say that because most of us, and I've been guilty of it as well, being, you know, starting a church, no longer having the actual physical um, place of worship now, um, trying to make it what I've always known. Mm -hmm. And so I had to come out of the agreement with this is how it's supposed to look. Right. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. This pandemic has proven to pastors mm -hmm. um, and ministry leaders that it's a make or break at this point with the members because if they are a lot of people, a lot of pastors have released their buildings, have lost, have let the church go. They have mm -hmm. and now you get to see if the things you have been teaching, mm -hmm. what you've been imparting, right, have been helpful in building life and sustaining life right. if I don't get to get to you. Mm -hmm. Or did we make ourselves so big that the people don't know what to do? Mm -hmm during this time. I am not, I am, um, I would love to see the creativity happen as a result of the stillness within every ministry leader. Mm -hmm. There's such a different creativity. We, we always trying to figure out how to get the next thing, how to attract the next people, who do, who do we market to and how do we market to these people? And I'm just not really big on that. I really want um, whatever, happens in ministry to be completely led and pushed out by the spirit because what now happens is when you get into the flow of what the spirit is doing opportunities find you right right i don't have to go really looking for any place to speak i have my own platform but i get asked to do things like this mm -hmm. um by people across the country sure i'll do it right i'll do it even more because i get to sit at home and do it right Right. How many days you want me to do it? Right. <laughs> you know, like, you know what I'm saying? So I allow, allow those opportunities and it, 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 it's more impactful. I think that we've had to get a lot more creative in how we reach. Because um, what I, you know, even within Ignite, we have mm -hmm. we used to have a talk when we were on our leadership calls. And I said, mm -hmm. I told before this was even a thing, I said, mm -hmm. we are so caught up in having these buildings. Why don't we let them go? Why don't we focus on the church um, as the people? Why don't we focus on the people? Uh, Pastor James said the same thing. Let's just focus on the people. We're going to, let's build the people. And, and now we're in a place where we're all doing the same thing. When right. the pandemic happened, they were like, well, how did it affect your church? It didn't. I've been doing this for months. Months, <laughs> right. <laughs> Connecting because with, yeah. Connecting with I people. I felt the yeah. tension of it. We felt the tension of it. We moved along with it. We didn't try to stand against the current of it. We mm -hmm. allowed it to be what it is, even though it didn't look like what we thought it was going to look like. Right, right. It still doesn't, what we thought. No, it doesn't. But I think we, to, what to we've every... learned is that even in our creativity and our ability, our willingness to do whatever spirit is asking us to do, mm -hmm. we, we are trying to, and effort, and try to do this with ease and effortlessness. Yes. Yeah. True. It should not be a burden on our families. It should mm -hmm. not be a burden on our homes. It should not be a burden. Yes, I am all for uh, uh, um, the business aspect. Don't get me wrong. I understand ministry. Mm -hmm. However, I told God when we did this a long time ago, I, if the people aren't doing it, I can't do this by myself. And this, and he, he's, I've been telling you not to make this what you thought it was going to be in the first place. Mm -hmm. That's good. Be completely transparent and be okay with it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and a lot of that has to do with prophetic words. I hear um, the prophetic words of people that we've trusted and um, words that we've had a long time ago. Hey, sometimes you got to come out of that too. Because mm -hmm. you're not in that season of your life anymore either. Mm -hmm. and, and take it from, if you want to view me as the prophet today, fine. Mm -hmm. Come into what, remember ye not the former things, mm -hmm. nor consider the days of old. Behold, I want to do something new. And now it's springing forth and we're seeing it. Okay. We Church will never be the same again. Mm -mm. The world will never be the same again. We may never stop wearing masks and, and all this other stuff because we don't know what's going to happen next. We're going to be in this thing for a little while longer. Mm -hmm. 
but how will you effectively do ministry? Will you only do it when you are before a camera on, on Sundays and Wednesdays? And will you do it at Kroger? Will you do it as you are walking through the mall? Will it be something as simple as opening the door for someone or helping somebody that you never would even speak to? Mm -hmm. How are we breaking down these barriers? There are barriers across uh, uh, the nation are being brought up and we see them everywhere. Mm -hmm. We got racial barriers, we got political barriers, we got all these other barriers. How are we trying to even, as a church, yeah. in the midst of being sensitive to what's happening, because I'm not stupid either, yeah. but what, what small pebbles are we throwing out for these ripples to affect? I don't have to impact a million people. Mm -hmm. I need to impact you. Yeah, one heart, one mind at a time. And you will do something with that. Right. And then they'll take that and do something with it. Right. I don't have to, if I don't impact but 20 people, in my lifetime, my my agreeance, my yes to God is just that. I don't you're trying to trip me up. I don't believe that um even the things that Jesus did mm -hmm. uh, were in, it were for us. Okay. His impact was the 12. Right. Right. His his assignment was the 12. The 12. Yeah. When he got to the cross, his yes was to God. Now the yes did he didn't we I don't I don't believe this is me and I'm real good on saying hey I could be wrong mm -hmm. I don't believe he was thinking about me but I do believe that yes included me right it included right right I, it didn't leave me out it didn't leave me out I was included yeah yeah I was I included it. but I, I can you understand. can't tell me that two thousand years ago I was on your mind no <laughs> yeah I wasn't here. <laughs> but I, I appreciate it because we're doing the same thing now we are right. the christ in the earth right. and we're doing things today and i tell apostle and i tell people we're doing things today that we will we won't see how it's going to impact two thousand years from now right yeah. these transitions that we are are doing and maneuvering even in this realm shifting things around from whatever aspect and lane that we have are going to impact people and they're not going to have to have the same struggles see the same situations two thousand years from now because we're handling it now right because we've said yes, said yes. Mm -hmm. and that yes took us to places we never would imagine mm -hmm. i would have never thought not this little church boy from murfreesboro nashville tennessee mm -hmm. my pastor he grew up calling me his little preacher I was singing in the choir. Uh -huh. I never thought that I would be a spirit guide. Right. That I'd be a coach because I knew all I knew was preacher. Right. I'm pastor. Mm -hmm. I'm so much more impactful now, I believe, mm -hmm. because I am first. I'm mm -hmm. in this body. Right. <laughs> first it. And the, I realize that the kingdom of God is within me. So I, I I tap into that, and I that's that's what I would tell ministry leaders: don't get caught in the form of things, mm -hmm. and don't forget the kingdom. We'll look for the kingdom everywhere else. We're mm -hmm. taught to look for it everywhere else. Even Jesus told us it's right where you are. Well, I thank you. That's a great place. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you, Chris. Thank you for having me. All right. Bye.